one of the closest relatives to the person after those from whom who originated he origi originated which are his parents and grandparents is one's sister sisters in islam hold a very high rank and their sequence is very close with regards to obligations and duties and if there is no other reason or no connection between a person and his sister except that they both come from the same parents, they were both or they both came out from the same womb and they both suckled the same breast and they were both raised in the same house, it would be sufficient. These would be enough reasons to love her and preserve and protect her rank and her rights. And just like Islam preserves the rights of women in all situations, as mothers, as daughters, as wives, as we already spoke in the previous three khutbahs, Islam also guards and protects the rights of sisters. And despite them being rights, yet out of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, He abundantly rewards those who fulfill them. One of the rights sisters have over the brothers is guardianship, cultivation, Islamic upbringing. The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Whoever has two sisters or three sisters, and he fears Allah with their regards and kindly treats them. Now remember when we spoke about the same uh, with regards to daughters, we said this includes Islamic upbringing, guidance, instruction, taking care of their faith, teaching them their religion. All of that is included. It's not merely food and drink and clothing. He said whoever has two or three sisters, fears Allah with their regards and upbringing them properly and treats them kindly, will be admitted into Jannah. That's not all. Also in the book of Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by al arnaut he sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever has two sisters or three sisters, and he treats them kindly, and fears Allah with their regard, with real regards in bringing up properly, Islamically, so on, until they separate from him by getting married or die, they will be a protection, a shield for him against the fire of hell. Now the third reward is the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. This is also reported by Ahmed classified as authentic by Arnaut. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever supports two or three sisters, sustains them until they separate from him by marriage or death or he dies himself, then me and him will be this close in Jannah, and he joined his middle finger and the pointer. Sallallahu alayhi wa Beautiful rewards which we are heedless of that are attached 
to sustaining, kind treatment, proper upbringing in the absence of the father, that is, towards our sisters. Another right that is preserved in Islam for sisters is inheritance. A sister, just like a woman as a wife, as a daughter, as a grandmother, they have their share in their inheritance. Sisters also do. Jabir radiallahu anhu, and this is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al Arnaut. He said, I became extremely ill. So the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr came to visit me. But I was unconscious on his deathbed. So he وسلم, performed wudu and poured on him his wudu. So he woke up. Then Jabir continues to say, So I asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying, O Messenger of Allah, I have money and I'm leaving behind sisters. What do I do with my money? Meaning, how do I divide this? So the Prophet وسلم, refrained from answering because there is nothing revealed up until that moment. Regarding sisters, he said, and then Allah Azza wa Jal sent down the last verse of Surah An Nisa. Yastaftunak, they ask you for a legal ruling, O Muhammad. Qulillahu yuftikum fil kalala. Say, Allah gives you a ruling with regards to kalala is a person who. Neither has descendants or ascendants. In Imru'un Halak, Laysa lahu waladun wa lahu ukhtun, falaha nisfu ma tarak. If a man dies and he doesn't have a child as an heir and he has a sister, then she takes half of his inheritance. Wahuwa yarithuha illam yakun laha walad. And he takes all her inheritance if she had no child. And there were two, if there were two sisters, they take two thirds of the inheritance. And if they were both brothers and sisters, then the male brothers, that is, the male takes double the share of the female. The brothers take double the share of the sisters. So it's a preserved share. It's a preserved right for sisters in Islam to inherit. Another very important right is to maintain ties of kinship with one's sister. The Prophet ﷺ said, as narrated by Abu Ramtha radiallahu anhu and reported by Ahmed classified as authentic by Al-Albani. Abu Ramtha said, I heard the Messenger وسلم, saying, instructing that is, Sil ummaka, thumma abaka, thumma akhtaka, thumma akhaka. ثُمَّ أَدْنَاكَ أَدْنَاكَ Maintain ties first with your mother, then your father, then your sister, then your brother, and then the closer relatives to you in order. 
Now remember, we said grandfathers and mothers have the rank of the father and the mother, so they come immediately after them. And some scholars said they hold the same rank, identical rank. So we're talking about aunts and maternal, paternal, and then uncles, maternal, paternal. Look at this sequence to see the importance of the sister. Some people have their sisters living in the same city and they don't even bother visiting them. If they remember to do so, they might call them once every blue moon or every few blue moons. And if the sister happens to come and visit him, he feels so burdened as if she's not a relative, a very close relative of his. As if Allah Azza wa Jal did not warn us against severing ties with kinship. Allah says, فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ So would you perhaps, if you turned away, cause corruption on earth and sever your ties with kinship? What's the result for that? أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَا رَهُمُ اللَّهِ Those are the ones whom Allah has cursed. فَأَصَمَّهُمْ And deafen them. وَأَعْمَى أَبْصَارَهُمْ I am blinded their vision. This is a harsh warning from Allah. Against severing ties with kinship in general. And the closer the relative is, the harsher the punishment is. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Protecting sisters and preserving their rights when they are married is a right. See, many people feel that once she's out, once she is in her husband's house, that's it. She deals with her life. Yes, this is generally true. But what if the husband ill-treats your sister? What if he wrongs her? What if he deprives her of her rights? What if he divorces her? Now this becomes a problem. Many people see this as a disaster. She's going to end up in my house. Yes! Your house should be the resort for your sister if she ever happens to get divorced in the absence of the father. Your house is hers, is her shelter. You should make her feel honored. You should make her feel at home. You should protect her if she's ever ill-treated by her husband. Ma'qal ibn Yasar radiyallahu anhu and this is reported by Al-Bukhari said I married my sister off to a man and after a while he divorced her. So she came back to me. After her idda, the waiting period, after divorce, the man changed his mind and 
came back to ask for her hand. And the narration says that he was a good man. Divorce happens, problems take place between a husband and his wife, right? It doesn't mean that one of them is evil. It's just human nature that we have differences and it can reach the divorce. So the man changed his mind and he was a good man. So he came back to Ma'qil ibn Yasar to ask for the hand of his wife again because after the idda ends, he has to go and ask for her hand again, conduct a contract and the same thing, right? And Ma'qil's sister wanted to go back. She also changed her mind. But Ma'qil ibn Yasar, because there was no instructions given at that time, so in the absence of religious text, he acted as a brother, as a protective brother, who saw that his sister was not properly treated, and that man hastened to divorce her. In other words, he can just marry her and remarry her and divorce her again. So the man came to Ma'qil, asking for his uh, sister's hand, his ex-wife's hand again. So Ma'qil said, La Allah, no by Allah I will not give her back to you. I honored you, gave you my sister. Look, look at the term he used, I honored you. I gave you my sister, it's an honor for you to have my sister. Look how he held his sister's rank up and high. I honored you and gave you my sister and you just divorced her and now you come back to me asking for her hand by Allah I will not give her back to you at that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ إِنْ do not prevent them from remarrying their former husbands so he gave her back to him رضي الله عنه but he was protective. He was guarding her rights, her honor, her dignity. He wanted to make sure that this man doesn't take her as something, a cheap commodity he takes back whenever he wants. No. This is an honor that you have my sister. But when there came a religious text instructing people what to do, he immediately submitted to that. But that man knew then that this wife of mine has a brother who honors her. I have an honorable woman as a wife. Another right of sisters is to be keen on their happiness, even if it's on account of my own comfort. Comp uh, sacrificing for my sister should be one of the principles of life. And Islam calls for this and encourages this. And the companions gave beautiful examples. One such example is Jabir ibn Abdullah. Radiallahu anhu, his father radiallahu anhu was martyred during the battle of Uhud. And left behind seven sisters of Jabir's. And another narration says there were nine. So Jabal says, and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Jabal says in one of the battles after his father was martyred, I was fighting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So he asked me, oh Jabir, did you marry? He said, yes. He said, was she a virgin or a thayyib? A thayyib is a woman who was married before and either divorced or widowed. 
He said, no, Thayyib. I took a Thayyib. He said, why didn't you take a virgin? You can play with her and she plays with you. Fresh for you. Now look at what his response was. To see how these companions understood Islam and put it into action. It wasn't just theory. He said, Ya Rasulullah, my father was martyred and he left behind nine daughters for me to take care of. And I hated to marry a young one. I wanted to marry a Thayyib, an older lady who can raise them and take care of them. This is just amazing. This is an amazing character. This man was just not anything that we know. This noble quality is rare. To give up your own joy, your own happiness, your own comfort for the sake of your sisters is truly, truly a lofty quality and high rank. And I would like to conclude with something that happens a lot regard, regarding sisters. It's very common for a married man to have disputes happen between his wife and his sister. And this increases if the sister happens to be in the same house. She has no other guardian but the brother, so she's remaining in his house. That's for those who keep them with them. So jealousy develops between females as they're naturally jealous. Right? So jealous, jealousy can develop between the sister and the wife, or the wife and the sister, exchangeable. And some men don't act wise. They start thinking one way. Well, it's either my wife or my sister. Why? Why does it have to be this or that? Her or her? Why can't the man be wise? And give each of them her due right. Your sister has a right. As a kinship. And your wife has the right. Of the marital bond between you two. So why do you have to wrong your sister. To please your wife. Or be unjust to your wife. So that your sister, sister doesn't get upset. The way to deal with this is as the Prophet ﷺ instructed, and this is in the book of Imam Bukhari, when Bilal gave an instruction to Abu Darda, he said, Give each his due right. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sadaqa Bilal. Bilal is saying the truth. Why don't you give each her right? Why do you have to wrong one of them to please the other? Men need to be wise when dealing with situations like this. And they happen a lot. And they even happen with the mother. So a man has to be wise when dealing with females or female relatives, the wife and his sister in this case, and the wife and the sister, the females, need to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And how they deal with their, their, the, the man 
whether the brother or the husband, and the other female, whether the wife or the sister. Allahumma aghfir lana wa arhamna wa aafina wa aafu anna ihdina wa hadibina wa jalna hudatan muhtadeen wa jalna sababan liman ihtada.